It's the only job I can do, you know, so, so that's, I'm not very good at anything else and too lazy to do any proper job, so I quite like this idea of writing, fantasizing, traveling, looking around for locations, for actors, and then every three years or so shooting a film, which is usually a nightmare, therefore one shouldn't do it too often. But the whole kind of lifestyle uh, works for me, especially since I don't have that much to say all the time, you know, so it takes me like a few years to kind of really feel that I really need to make a, a film, but then I really do feel I need to make a film, and and everything becomes quite easy. You know? And then, uh, and, and the strange thing is that every film I make, almost, well, every film actually, is exactly about where I am in life at, at the time, or where I am in my head at the time. So, so making films helps me organize my life as well. You know, like these are the different stages mental stages, uh, moments in life. And, there's a, and, and the films are like um, markers on the, on the way. Dwa serduszka, cztery oczy. Oj, oj, oj. Co płakały we dnie w nocy. I wanted when I was already quite old, you know, so I'd done stuff that I liked anyway, you know, like, like my documentaries, which I used to make, and, uh, and I had my highlights there, you know, I had uh, like a really good moment with documentaries where I thought this was, this was it, and, you know, awards, and just generally kind of felt I wasn't doing the right thing at the right time, in the right place. And then I had a dip, you know, and I had a kind of, started making feature films, and I made a a couple of good ones and then I had a kind of uh, is this, you know so I've periodically ups and downs you know and um, and Oscar is just another up it's a big up you know and not just Oscar but the whole career of Ida you know it's actually very very surprising um, and unexpected uh, but but then you, you know after the film you still face you still have the same problem uh, okay what's the next film you know I still have to kind of start believing in it and getting exciting about it excited about it so it, it, the situation is, creatively speaking, is the same, you know. Of course, if you were more into a career, um, a career director, you know, then you'd probably go to America and just kind of get onto that kind of ladder of, you know, filmmakers. And, and Oscars are very useful for that, you know. But if, you, if that's not what you want to do, you're just basically thrown back onto your own territory, you know, your own bad ideas or good ideas, and, and, and then having to make that work. Ida helped me, not in terms of Oscars and recognition, it's just the, the way I shot it and told it, quite elliptically, uh, quite uh, kind, of, kind of restrained way, it, it helped me get this story into focus, you know, because it's a really sprawling big story, you know, how do you tell it without being like biopic you know, and biopics are usually quite awful, you know, and you have to kind of explain how you get from A to B, and then most scenes are about explaining, you know, and, and kind of showing what the cause and effect is. You know, so. so, but with Ida, I kind of realized you can actually be quite elliptic and, the, and let the audience fill in the gaps. Of course, you have to know what's in the gaps yourself, but kind of but in, you know, give enough stuff to suggest what happened in between. Uh, but you don't have to be boring about it. You, know? you have to have really boring scenes that explain stuff. It's the ghost of my parents, in a way, of their, of their, uh, of their kind of complicated relationship. Uh, so that's ever since they died in 1989, and they died together in 89, just before the wall came down. You know? So, 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 it started. You know, their absence started being very present in my life. You know, and then, and I thought, oh God, what an amazing couple! You know, what a disastrous couple! You know, how. And then when I was kind of inventing stories and love stories, sometimes I was like, well, nothing beats this story in a way. Like, this is the most, and what's more, this story has everything else in it, you know, politics, exile, betrayals, you know, and everyone has two protagonists who are as strong as each other, and therefore the war is, um, the war is all out war. You know, usually in couples, one person is more pliable than the other, but, the, the, but like my parents, you know, the couple in Cold War are both 
tough. And once one is up and the other down and vice versa. So, so I kept coming back to it. Um, and then I realized that I'll never make the film about my parents because it'd be stupid and pointless. And, and it's a 40 year long story. And you know, they kind of lived on and off together for 40 years. Couldn't literally make a, a film about their story because it's pretty messy. It kind of, it had too many stages and too many separations and meetings. And, and there were all sorts of nuances. Plus I knew them too well. And if you know somebody, really closely you understand them less you know so uh, it's, it's quite good to forget that it's these people but this kind of story with the similar mechanics I reduced the, the time scale to 14 years so I could have two actors do it you know rather than having to do this thing where you change actors halfway through the film which never works or rarely works and then um, uh, and then I um, and I added the element of music, you know, which, which helped me reimagine them quite substantially, you know, because they're both musicians, they meet because of music, through music, they stick together with music, uh, and, and, uh, and all the crises are kind of reflected in their music. Uh, so once I introduced the music, it became, it, it became a much more autonomous, kind of free-flowing story. I still dedicated it to the memory of my parents because they're the reason why, but yeah. Well, I never had so many filming days before, you know, but, but here I, I did um, scrap some scenes uh, which we shot already because I could sort of, not many, but a, a few, and I invented new ones, you know, so it took a bit of, um, you know, additional filming days, but that was sort of built into the schedule and into the budget. I mean, it wasn't a huge budget. But because of this strange method I have, uh, the producers are already kind of prepared to be flexible, you know. Um, uh, and um, the pre-production was long, but you know, what is, what is pre-production? It wasn't like, money wasn't being spent massively. You know? I was just driving around with my production designers and my DP, taking photographs, sometimes going around folk festivals to find like folk performers for the, the opening section of the film just putting the elements together and it was and taking my time but it wasn't like all hands to the pumps you know money being spent you know that's what pre-production usually usually meant so it was like approaching the film slowly and trying and rewriting it all the time you know just rewriting not because of stuff I found but also just that time you spend living with your film is is time well spent you know because time is the best sculptor in a way you know you just have to kind of approach your film slowly and and a lot of, not so much rehearsals, but meetings with the actors. Uh, sometimes a like, little, little bit of rehearsal, but not, not fixing anything. Just kind of just trying this way, that way, for, for the brain to kind of start working, their brain to start working as well. And there was a lot of, pre there was a lot of fiddling with the music. You know, I had to find, I can imagine the arrangements of the music, the kind of folk arrangements and the jazz arrangements. Then the actors had to learn to uh, sing and dance and play the piano, and that took time. And that's not exactly pre-production. I mean, Anna Kulik had to like, literally spend six months, twice a week she went to this folk ensemble on the Mazovsha, on the outskirts of Warsaw, and learning the choreography and the steps and, and, and all that. And she's not a natural dancer, you know, so it was a, like a huge effort which also helped her with character, because very often physical, physical exercise helps you imagine the inside of the character as well. Um, whereas Tomasz had to learn to play the piano, learn to pretend to conduct, <laughs> uh, and that took some time. And they had to learn to get on together as well, the two actors. They, you know, they, I wanted them to spend a bit of time together, maybe go to, go to a dancing lesson or something, just to kind of feel good about them, you know, together. So it was like very slow, organic approach towards the film. So I do uh, the same setup uh, many times, you know, so, uh, and it's quite notorious, you know, people joke that I have 60 takes, you know, I don't have 60 takes, but I do have 27, you know, so. Um, and it's not exactly the takes of the same thing, you know, it's very often, because um, I try not to shoot with coverage, you know, with different angles, to, to, I try not to leave it to the cutting room, you know, I try to cut already, you know, in front of the camera, as it were. So, um, and to shoot a, a scene ideally from one angle, you know, so where the actors act, 
in good rhythm and feel kind of free and both have to be firing at the same time, which is not so easy. Uh, or both or three or four, you know. Uh, and then I, I need to have the background worked out, you know, the, the, the extras are an element of the image, you know, the, the faces, how you light them, how you shape them, and all that is part of a picture and the lighting and the framing. So very often between the takes we actually rejig it slightly, you know, in terms of acting, in terms of, uh, you know, maybe I take some lines off away that don't feel good anymore or, you know, uh, and then I change the background, I change the framing, I change the lighting, maybe it's, you know, it's, it can be improved. I'm trying to uh, work in a way where, where the image, the acting, everything is part of the same thing, you know, so it doesn't feel like there's a kind of division of labor between the DP and the actors and the background action, you know, everything is just like this one magical moment that comes together and it should feel like God-given and graceful but and spontaneous, but to get there you need like 27 takes. So. Żebym chłopca nie kochała, oj, oj, oj. A ja chłopca chaps za szyję będę kochać póki.